Good afternoon, ladies, and welcome to Fire Above Rubies. Today we are diving into Galatians chapter 2. This chapter finds Peter and Paul in a quarrel, which is a really interesting situation. We don't picture the founders of our faith being in this sort of situation. But before Peter's Jewish friends arrive on the scene in this chapter, Peter is happy to hang out with the Gentiles. Gentiles are just anyone who is not a Jew. Anyone who is not a Jew is a Gentile. That's you and I. So before Peter's Jewish friends show up on the scene, he's content and happy to hang out and eat dinner with the Gentiles. And when, when they do show up, he all of a sudden becomes too good for the Gentiles. And Paul gets upset with this and he kind of calls him to the floor. And the Jewish group of friends is throwing shade at the Gentile group of friends. And Paul begins to adamantly remind um, Peter in the nicest of ways that before they found the grace of Jesus Christ, they were both dirty, rotten sinners, and essentially tells Peter to mind his own business. Friends, it is possible to walk this walk with God for so long that you forget the beautiful, life-altering, phenomenal grace that God extended you. It's that person who you work with, and they're living in outright blatant sin, debauchery, it's just almost sickening to you. Who has room to judge them? I don't have room to judge them. That sister that you go to church with or your friends on Facebook with and you see little things creeping up in her walk with God that maybe are questionable, you don't have room to judge her. And I don't have room to judge her. That family member that you see fall over and over and over again in their walk with God and it's easy to get frustrated and just say, why can't you get it together? Well, guess what? I don't have room to judge them and you don't have room to judge them. We need to mind our own business. I don't care how goody two shoes your life was before you came to Jesus. You might have been wholesome and pure before you found Jesus, which is doubtful. Even if you were, you were still, and I was still, a dirty, rotten sinner. The moment that you think you don't sin, the moment you think someone else's sin is worse than your sin, do you know what that is? It's pride. It's pride that causes us to think that our sin is somehow less dirty and rotten than anyone else's. Proverbs 16 and 5 tells us that a proud heart is an abomination before God. You think about that for a moment. A proud heart is an abomination before God. When I find myself standing in a place of judgment of someone else, that is me being prideful enough to think that I don't need the grace that God has extended me and I have a right to stand in judgment of someone else. I can't judge you because it's only by the grace of God that I am allowed the opportunity to walk with Him. When I begin to judge others, I am spitting on the grace that Jesus Christ has extended me. I am making it meaningless. Paul, in the last verse of this chapter of Galatians, says, I don't want to make void the grace of God, or I don't want to make meaningless the grace of God. We can, with our judgment, label the grace of God as meaningless. We can't make it meaningless for someone else, but we can label it as meaningless. It doesn't matter that God shows you grace. I don't show you grace. That's how we can act. And it sounds really dumb, right? But we stand in that place. We do stand in that place. When you find yourself tempted to judge anyone, breathe. Remember for a moment the phenomenal grace that Jesus Christ showed you. My husband has a wonderful, mind-blowing for me um, illustration about the grace of Jesus. And I'm going to share it with you for a quick second. We think that grace is you're doing 10 over, you're doing 75 and a 65, and the police officer pulls you over, sees you're having a bad day, and just says, you know what? Don't speed anymore. Go on about your merry way. No ticket for you today. That's what we think is grace. But my friends, that's mercy. That's mercy. That's seeing something we've done wrong and saying, hmm, I'm going to look past it. You go right on ahead. Grace is this. 
Grace is you're doing a 95 through a school zone right as kids are getting out and it's dangerous. And this, the cops start to put on their sirens and chase you. And you're so upset that you fly through an intersection and you knock over the old woman and she falls to the ground with her walker and you don't even know if she's okay. You cause some accidents along the way because you're clipping cars and not paying attention to where you're going because you're trying to get away from what's chasing you. You cause an accident for yourself and the cops finally catches you and whenever you step out of the car for him pounds of drugs fall at your feet and there's the cop standing looking at you going boy are you in trouble but I tell you what you go ahead you take the keys to my car and you go on ahead because I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna take your place I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna get arrested and I'm gonna go to jail and I'm gonna give my life in your stead that is the grace of Jesus. That is the grace of Jesus. He didn't just forgive us and move on. He didn't just overlook our sin. Jesus Christ gave himself. He became our sin. He became sin who knew no sin for us. For us. So that we could have his grace. So that we could have our grace. Rather than being dispensers of judgment, we need to become conduits of grace. Rather than being dispensers of judgment, we need to become conduits of God's grace. And none of us deserve it. None of us deserve God's grace. Where do I have room to judge anybody else? Your challenges for today are to read Galatians chapter 2 and to ask God, for him to help you get rid of a judgmental attitude, to see people through his eyes, and to become a conduit of grace. Thank you all for being here today. If no one has told you lately, you are loved and you are valuable and your worth is far, is far above rubies. I love you all. You've got a couple of phenomenal guest speakers coming to you the next couple of days, and I will be back with you on Sunday. God bless.